Hey yo, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna do a vlog style update on what's been happening inside the Dream Reef Tank, but also an update on things to come outside of the Dream Reef Tank. All right, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reefs. And as touched on in the intro today, we're just going to do a quick video. It has been school holidays here in Australia over the Easter break, which uh, to be fair has restricted my amount of time I have to film and edit for this uh, YouTube channel. But I did want to get a video out this weekend and I figured I've got a lot of things that are about to happen to this tank and also some updates to the tank itself that I wanted to share with you all. Now, First and foremost, I did tease the other week that I have been doing some testing down here on the Kamoa Reefmaster SPA. And uh, I can let you know that that video is only a week or two away, but I did want to share that with you now so that any questions you guys have on this brand new revolutionary complete reef testing device, fire them away. Be sure to put them in the comment section down below and I will ensure I cover every aspect that I possibly can on that video. So far, I can say the device has definitely got some pros and some cons. Whether that means it's going to work for you and your reef tank is up to you, but you can rest assured that I'll give you a completely unbiased view of this product. I do not get to keep the product. It was given to me for the purpose of the review, but I do have to give it back. So there's absolutely no lip service uh, required or anything like that at all, you can trust that I'll give you a completely unbiased opinion on that device and compare it against some of the other existing reef automations along with some of the brand new reef automations that have been announced just this week. We're looking at uh, the guys over at Hydros at uh, Coral View have released their test, which also does alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, nitrate and phosphate. It does look as if Neptune systems are about to drop their expanded Trident or their Trident 2. No, I have no inside word whatsoever. You know my thoughts on Neptune systems, particularly with their lack of support here in Australia. So please don't take that uh, as an inside word. They could just release a uh, thermometer, who knows, but they are teasing something big and um, definitely seems to be the path that all testers are going. We know that we definitely have the Mastertronic Essentials coming along in the same vein. And then of course, we've got the Reef Factory Smart Tester, which does the same number of elements, albeit one at a time. So there's heaps of movement in the world of complete reef automation or testers out there, I should say. And um, I've got my hands on the uh, Kamoa Reefmaster SPA or SPA. I'm not even sure how you pronounce it, whether you say SPA or SPA. And I have been putting it through its paces. And like I said, I've got a few things that I will share with you in the uh, complete unboxing setup. Uh, overview of how it works and uh, a review of where I think that device is at, but I do want to ensure that we go over everything you guys want covered and um, give you a little sneak peek of how it's operating now. I'll be sure to put all that footage on screen for you now, show the device, show you the uh, reagents that it does use its own brand of reagents and they do sort of just hang out the back a little bit. It does have a nice little display on screen that shows you all of the parameters and a status of where things are at testing. And it does also have some other interesting little features where it can do a couple of tests at the same time. It's got uh, seemingly two testers in one, one that handles uh, three elements, one that handles another couple. So super interested to see uh, how that turns out and I will share all of the feedback right here on Parker's Reef. Now, next up on developments for this tank, I have been talking about replacing up here these Orfec OR3 light bars for quite some time, mainly because I was not overly impressed with the performance of them. And then the nail in the coffin was uh, this guy up here on the end here, did fail on me, so I've only got three of the four working now, and um, it was as good as excuse as any for me to go out and get some new reef lights to put over this tank. Not replacing the others, the Kessels and the Phillips will definitely stay on this tank. I'm a huge, huge fan and a big advocate of the Phillips Coral Cares, and the Kessels do give you that color and shimmer. And also with these uh, magnetic reflectors, the ability to spotlight corals and get par into spots precisely where you want them. But I do want some more blue fill to go across the tank and I have been fortunate enough to get my hand on a few different lights to try and we'll cover that in some coming episodes over the next few weeks. I've got some uh, lights from AI here, so aqua illumination blades. I've got the coral glow here, which I've got to say my experience to date with these so far, not on my own tank, but uh, just seeing them light up. I've not been a fan of the color of those. I've much more preferred the coral grow, which is their sort of fuller spectrum uh, with a bit more blue than anything 
anything. The Coral Glow tends to be a little bit more of a UV and a purple spectrum. Coral Grow is the light that I recommend for 99% of the tanks, and it's probably the way I'm gonna go on this system. But just to keep things interesting, I've got a swarm of other lights. I've got some Vita Minis from Alu Magic that I'm thinking of, rather than going front to back on the tank like I did with the Orfex, regardless of the light I pick, well, it will depend on the size of the light, but I'm thinking I'll probably more likely go on the front of the Coral Cares like this and angle back down into the tank just to sort of help with the spread rather than front to back, which doesn't really pose to be an issue as these corals grow out. I sort of want to get some light further to front down in and uh, I think a nice light bar like this will do that job really nicely. So we'll see how we go there. So that's the uh, Illumagic Vitaminis there. Also got uh, the Reef Factory Reef Flare Bar to try here. And then last but not least, I've got uh, the Sea Torch Light Bar as well. So. I've got no shortage of light bars that I can test and put over this tank, power them up, see how they look with the Philips Coral Cares, with the Kessels, and of course, to see how it all works together. So I'm um, super excited to see how that goes. I am 90% sure I'm gonna go the AI Blade Coral Grow, but uh, the fortunate position I'm in is that I get to actually unbox all these lights, set them up, have a look at them over the tank and then make an informed decision, hopefully with a par meter as well, just to see if there is any impact from these light bars or whether it is purely aesthetic. So uh, stay tuned for that video and please do let me know again in the comments if there's anything in particular you want me to cover in that video. Any other lights you think I should consider, I will try and get my hands on them for that review as well. But um, yeah, I'm curious to hear your feedback now. Before we talk about the tank itself, and we will finish things up with the tank itself of what's been happening there, there's been one other little development that uh, did arrive in the mail this week, and that is the uh, PNW Micro Reef Ready Tank, which in Australia is brought to us by Delua. It does have a competition going at the moment where there is $1,000 up for grabs. Now, I'd need to check the details. I'll put them on screen. I'm not sure if that's $1,000 for a winner overall or $1,000 for each freshwater and marine, but the tanks do come in the two varieties, whether you want to do a little plan planted system or a little reef system, but they do have some prizes up there for the best scape and the best setup, which is pretty cool. And um, these systems are super, super cute. When you see them in person, it is super hard to leave them behind because uh, who doesn't want another tank in their house? But we all have the problem of, well, they cost a lot of money, they take a lot of space. This device is planned to address both of those issues and is a complete system. We're talking lights, return pump, sump, stand, tank, all in one. And it's all fairly modular. I quite like it. They've done a really good job with it. We will unbox that and go through uh, some of the features. In fact, we might do that right now. I've been dying to rip this box open. So uh, let's bring the camera in. We'll jump down on my desk here and we'll open it up right now. All right, so here is the PNW Custom Micro Reef Ready Tank, as you can see, made in the United States of America and uh, is a foreign measurement to us Australians here. It's got 40 ounces, I assume that's the water volume. Not overly sure, but uh, I was about to rip open this box and I had actually ripped open the tape here and then I thought I should probably do this on camera. So I uh, set up the uh, tripod and got the camera out. So uh, without any further ado, let's rip this open and have a look and see what we get in here. Get this uh, little box here to uh, kick things off. Black shell, blue LED. I assume that means that this is for the uh, for the reef variant because these tanks do come in a, a reef and a, a freshwater variation. You also get the uh, Kemi Pure blue uh, filtration media there. Now this is ironically their smallest one and is good for five gallons of water or 19 liters, which is considerably bigger than this tank. So we should be well filtered there. We also get our uh, little Australian pronged uh, double USB outlet. We get a uh, USB cable that goes to the tank. We get a, a PNW custom sticker and we get some uh, Looks like some sort of cleaning prong, something like that. Not overly sure what they're for, but I'm sure it'll make sense once the tank's set up. Ripping out this bad boy here, it looks like it might come pretty much assembled. In fact, it does. Not many reef tanks come with everything like that. I know the Cades do a pretty good job of coming completely assembled. You just got to separate a couple of boxes and you're good to go, but uh, these really do come completely assembled. I'll just lay them down so you can have a better look. So this being the Australian variation has the Delua marking on the front. I'll just get my ASMR uh, views up there by ripping through that uh, cling wrap there. Does that come out? A little uh, fiddly to uh, 
get this all off, but what I might do is undo this uh, light bracket here, which is actually adjustable on the back. I'll give you a view of that uh, in a second. There's two screws that hold it in place and you've got a number of different settings where you can set that up. Pretty cool little setup, but uh, let's get all this packaging out of the way so we can have a better look at this unit. Of course, the tank is connected because it does have the uh, return line in there. We do have this little uh, diffuser style. Is it a diffuser or is it just clear? Oh yeah, it's clear. Looks like they just put that on to protect it during shipping. It's got little prongs there in it. Ah, the return pump does actually come out. Interesting. So there's our two drain lines. So we actually have a uh, full siphon and an, and an emergency by the looks. And then we've got a, a return outlet there, all sort of hard plumbed in. And then uh, in here, if I can remove it, I can. So we've got our uh, stand there. Pretty heavy duty stand, I gotta say. This is obviously gonna hold the tank and the water up, but uh, I don't think it's gonna weigh that much, but it's a nice strong construction nonetheless. Then we get to our sump here, which has got this uh, neat little, uh, looks like a little splash guard here. Yeah, so that's just gonna keep the, the water in the sump as much as possible rather than just evaporating out. And then down in here, we've got where our water drains in. It will then overflow into this section here, which is where we're gonna put our uh, Kemi Pure sachet in there. Very nice little design in there. It's got some pretty cool little cutouts in there. I'll see if I can get a close up for you to check those out. And then we've got our return pump here, which has got a little fitting there. It's a uh, USB powered pump. That'll sit in there and connect onto uh, this fitting here to return back to the tank. And uh, obviously that'll go through, hit our weir and then uh, drain back down into the uh, sump and go around and around again. So. Pretty slick little setup, I gotta say. I was not expecting it to be uh, this nifty. You even got little cutouts there for uh, things like the uh, cable for the uh, return pump to fit back through. Can sit that back on there for now. And uh, let's assemble this unit sort of back into position again. Now, obviously I've sped the footage up a little bit here, but it does go together very, very easily. Thankfully, due to the slip on hose fittings, then you can pour water in like I am here with no sand or rock. It looks like the system takes about a liter to a liter and a quarter. And then I've plugged the pump in via the uh, little USB power brick that I've got here, bringing the water level up to the uh, indication on the sump, which tells you that the system is right. Then you can plug the LED in like I have here and voila, you have that beautiful reef colored light ready for you to stock and win that thousand dollar prize. All right, that is the micro reef ready tank brought to the Australian market here by Delua and overseas by uh, PNW Custom. If you wanna see this tank in person, I will be taking it in store to my local fish shop this Saturday, well, the day this video gets released. I wanna take it in there so I can have a little bit of a play around with some rock rubble and see if we can start building a scape that loosely replicates what I have in the dream reef here because I think that'd be pretty, pretty cool. That being said, yeah, it's a fairly difficult thing to do in a tank that's about a liter of uh, water volume, but uh, we'll go in and have a play with it. And if you wanna see the tank in person and come in and uh, share your ideas on what you think I should do, maybe to try and get that thousand dollar prize or even just to have a look at the tank, get some inspiration so you can get your own and be in the running for that thousand dollar prize, please do come and store Deer Park Aquarium. I'll be there all day today. Now, moving on from the micro tank, we get back to the dream reef tank. There's been a couple of developments in this tank that are both, um, both good and bad as it always is in reefing and I think we'll start off with the bad because it gives us the opportunity to finish on a high. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers out there had noticed over the last uh, couple of videos that I did have a Lenardi wrasse in this tank and uh, all seemed to be going quite well, beautiful fish. Over the last uh, week, week and a half, he started to get a little bit ratty looking, his tail looked a little bit nipped, his lips looked a little bit swollen, which I did find interesting, but uh, I didn't think too much of it. Rats tend to sort of scourge through the uh, sand and rock a little bit, but uh, as of three days ago now, I've not seen him. Um, so I am assuming I've lost him. He might not be, he could just be laying low somewhere, but uh, in my experience, when a fish goes hiding, it's never a good sign. That being said, <laughs> on the flip side of that, I did add a Mandarin uh, Dragonette to this tank probably three months ago now. And apart from the first 30 seconds when I put him in the tank after acclimation, I did not see him again. And I'm saying, when I say I didn't see him again, I didn't see him at all. I didn't find a body. I didn't see him hiding. I didn't see, I didn't see a glimpse of him for a good two months. Now, I was 100% certain that Mandarin was gone. I actually suspected my uh, Marine Beta had eaten him or her. But uh, as it turns out, uh, the Mandarin is alive and well. He does tend to uh, come out and hang about for a good two, three days at a time and then disappear again. He finds a little honey pot of some pods or something somewhere and um, 
just hides long enough for me to be certain that he's uh, passed again, but uh, then all of a sudden he comes out. So, of course, today the day I'm filming is not out and about, but of course yesterday he was up swimming up and down this side of the tank, looking an absolute treat, a new family favorite because of the beautiful colors. He is the uh, full psychedelic colors, not the spotted ones. So has that awesome oil slick uh, blue, green, orange colors all through him. Gorgeous fish, but uh, yeah, back to the uh, the downside of the Lenardi Ras, obviously a little bit of a dream fish that uh, I just can't seem to get past the uh, Ras curse on this tank. Never had great success with Ras, and I'm not sure if it's my tank mates, if it's my tank conditions. The only fish I suspect that may have caused issues for it were actually, funnily enough, these guys, the uh, blue-green Chromus. They're the only fish sort of showing any signs of aggression in this system, and uh, to be fair, they do go pretty hectic at night. Um, mostly all towards themselves. They do sort of have a little bit of argy-bargy with the Antheas, and I do suspect maybe the Ras got caught up in that, but um, fingers crossed that he is still in there and still doing okay, but um, he might have been the nail in the coffin for me on Ras. <laughs> I've tried a few particularly high-end Ras in this system, um, including some lower, uh, more common Ras, but um, just can't seem to keep them alive for any sort of decent period of time. That being said, uh, things like my orchid dotty back here looks fantastic, is doing great. All of my other fish, including my big guy, where is he? My Atlantic blue tang that uh, I was pretty certain he was on the way out, has really had a really good turnaround. He's being a little bit shy. He's still a little bit skinny, but uh, his uh, fins are no longer tattered. He has color. Um, in fact, quite a lot of color in here now. The thing is a little bit interesting. For those who don't know, Atlantic blue tangs actually start life as yellow. In their juvenile stages, they're completely yellow. And then uh, fairly early on, they uh, turn into this nice deep blue color with some lines through them. My guy now, which uh, I'm under the impression is probably nearing a good 10 plus years of age, has actually started to get yellow reappearing in his tail. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's uh, sort of the terminal phase of his life cycle. I don't know if he's uh, reversing and aging. Um, I, I don't hear he's coming right up on camera now. I don't actually know what that means, but uh, I am happy to say that his health does appear to be on the rebound and um, I can't ask for much more than that, I guess. But uh, all the other fish are doing well. Um, I haven't had any dramas other than that Lenardi Ras and uh, I have had the upside of that Mirandaran coming back out. So fish wise, you win some, you lose some, but overall things are doing fairly well. Now, coral-wise on this system, things have been a little bit interesting. Again, some in the positive column, some in the negative column. Mostly in the positive column though, I have been probably a little bit lazy with this tank over the last two, three months and it just let things grow wild. I do generally have a preference to just let corals grow and if they're growing into each other, I just let them be. But uh, sometimes that works and you turn out, you'll get this awesome little uh, wall where they grow and everything looks awesome, real natural looking. Sometimes they'll kill each other. And I did happen to lose a couple of pieces just from letting things grow a little bit long. So the other day I did jump in there and you possibly can see some things around uh, like the Dustin's cousin. I took the big coral cutters in there and really hacked away at it because it was really starting to shade things like my uh, toxic candy Came there was almost completely in darkness and uh, to be honest it's a showpiece coral so I wanted to give that plenty of light. My beautiful red vertical Monty behind it was also nearly completely in the dark. This Monty down here, the uh, Monty Digitata, it's pretty pale. It was getting pretty shaded for light. I'm not too fussed if that doesn't make it but uh, I did trim back the Dustin's Cousin just to give that a bit of space and then I did trim as I continuously do over here, my blue digi, I just try to rip as much of that out as I can every now and then just because it tends to block flow and light over this end of the tank. All in all, the corals have been growing really, really well and really fast. And I'll get you some top down footage so you can see things like the Monty caps over there, my uh, beautiful, uh, now uh, it displayed in an art gallery, believe it or not, a uh, picture I took of my lovely uh, grafted Sunfire Monty Cap is uh, in the local art gallery, which is pretty cool to see. But uh, that Monty Cap and my red Monty Cap have just grown excessively. That's another example that's actually grown into each other and is uh, holding fine at the moment. Uh, obviously my SVS all growing really, really well. Some of them have uh, lost a little bit of color, mostly because my nutrients have come up a little bit, again, being a little bit lazy. But um, 
all in all, they're growing quite well. Talking about the downside of corals though, you may recall, and you can possibly see my uh, hammer garden a little bit thinner than it normally is. We are still fairly early in the morning here, so the lights have only been on for about an hour and a half. So that will fill out a little bit more, but uh, I did lose a couple of heads of hammer over the last few months, and I did suspect the Australian stripey I had in the system. So I did take him out, as you do, fish is eating your corals, particularly a lot of corals, and it's not something like my uh, beloved uh, prized hybrid angel, something as common as an Australian stripey, sorry buddy, you gotta go. So I took him out, found a new home for him, all is swell, but uh, the little Aptasia problem I had in this system where I could see an Aptasia here and there, quickly became a big Aptasia problem, and I'm talking in the space of that two months. I went from probably being able to count a dozen Aptasia in the tank, and I know if you can count a dozen, you've probably got 300, but I could only see a few Aptasia here and there. In that two months, I went to the point where I could see literally hundreds, if not close to a thousand of Aptasia just littering everywhere, and that possibly also contributed to uh, some of those coral deaths. I think when I had corals growing into each other, sometimes you get a bit of warfare there, you get a little bit of die-off where they connect. Wherever that die-off would be, I'd then get Aptasia growing there, and that would just chain react from there. So. Two courses of action there. I obviously need to get myself another Australian stripey, but I did also, when I jumped in the tank and I gave it a good trim, I did go to town with Aptasia X, which I know people have got their opinions of, but uh, I personally find it works fairly well. If you hit it a few times in a row, you've got to sort of hit the Aptasia, give it another day or two or three to almost look like it's resurfacing, hit it again. In my system, and I did it with the stripey as well, but I've still got the file fish in here, which um, he's normally pretty camera, oh, he's at the back, I was going to say, he's normally not shy of the camera, but uh, my file fish, he's an Aptasia eating file fish, but as all of these Aptasia eating fish tend to get a little bit lazy, he'll go for the prepared foods a lot quicker, but I do find when I treat the Aptasia, he gets an immense hunger for it, to the point where I almost have to push him away so I can squirt them with the uh, Aptasia Rex. That worked as well again, so I'm hoping one treatment might be enough. I was able to squirt the Aptasia and then the uh, Aptasia eating file fish went to town in there. So hopefully he'll keep on top of that, but I will try and add a baby stripey or two to this system just to sort of get things back under control again. I would like to add some more Antheas just to maybe try and get the uh, Chromus aggression under control or at least dispersed a little bit amongst the Chromus and the Antheas. I don't think I'll be trying an expensive RAS again of just you know, every tank has its Achilles heel, and uh, this tank definitely seems to be RAS. I cannot keep RAS for a period of time, so I'll probably steer clear of RAS, but uh, the rest of the fish in there are doing really well, as touched on the Atlantic Blue looking great again, so that is all good, and um, I think we'll probably just leave those fish list alone, with the exception of the Australian stripies in there for some time, and maybe some more Antheas, but no more show fish in this system for some time. All right, guys, we might wrap things up there on this vlog style update on both the Dream Reef Tank and things happening around the Dream Reef Tank. I'm sorry it was a slightly shorter video this week. As I touched on earlier, it has been school holidays here, which has just restricted my time and availability for doing updates on this tank and all other things around Parker's Reef. But I am 100% honest when I do say I do want to hear your feedback on things like the Kamoa Reefmaster Spa, the lighting upgrade, and even things like the uh, Micro Reef Ready Tank. I absolutely want to hear your feedback on things you want to see covered in those videos. I'm just fortunate enough to be the one that stands in front of the camera, but I deliver these videos for you guys out there, the subscribers and the members, so that you guys can see as much unbiased content as you want to see around this incredible hobby of reef keeping. Now, as touched on, I do have an incredible number of subscribers out there. It blows me away every time I see the subscribers. Now, I'm subscriber numbers going up, if I can even say words still. But I do also have, as you can see on screen here, a fantastic and incredible base of members that chip in a couple of bucks each each month to make these videos possible and to make things like the uh, lighting video completely unbiased. The money that I get from that subscription or those memberships enables me to pick up this equipment without having to have any sort of sponsorship or bias from any manufacturers. So I can tell you exactly what I think about the products without uh, any fear of a repercussion there whatsoever. So from my heart, I truly humbly appreciate all of the membership dollars that come in. It really do make these videos and this channel possible. So thank you very much. Other than that, guys, I don't really have anything else to say. I hope you've had a fantastic Easter break, and I look forward to bringing you those few videos in the coming weeks. Till then, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.